Life is a beautiful thing. You were brought into this world with a blank canvas, and over time, our passions and life experiences paint our life story. Along the way, you will experience milestones that hold immense meaning. Unfortunately, they also come with substantial price tags. Let's go. If you haven't heard, babies can be expensive. Preparing for them, birthing them, and even raising them. Leading up to your due date, expectant mothers have prenatal care, where the growth and health of the baby is consistently checked. Depending on your health insurance, each visit to your obstetrician can cost 90 to even a few hundred dollars. Ultrasounds can cost about a hundred, and special tests like amniocentesis can be a couple thousand. The birth itself can range between $3,000 and $15,000. Now I'm using such a wide range because there's a lot of factors that come into play. What type of birth is it? Traditional or C-section? How long are you going to be in the hospital after the birth? Do you need anesthesia? Are you insured or uninsured? These are all factors that you have to consider. And if you're lucky enough to have twins or more, then the bill can be even larger, sometimes five times more. Other costs to consider can be new maternity clothing for the mother, baby clothing, strollers, cribs, formulas, diapers, binkies, uh, new health insurance for the baby, and also postpartum care if it's necessary. Having kids is not cheap. According to the Institute of Family Studies, it costs roughly a quarter of a million dollars to raise a kid from birth to 18. So in the future, when your kid's misbehaving, you could let them know that you could have gotten a sports car instead. Congratulations, you're gonna be graduating high school soon and going to college. Well, one thing you're gonna to need to take is the ACT or SAT, and each exam costs roughly $100 each. But the prep courses for these exams can range from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars, depending on the intensity and length of the program. And if you wanna go one step further, private tutors can range from 40 to $60 an hour. Now, when applying to schools, you will also see that there's an application fee. Now, to be fair, not all schools do this, and some of them, it's free to apply. But a majority of them will have a fee that ranges between $50 and $100. Now, I remember in high school, I had a buddy who applied to about a dozen schools or so. And when we were having the conversation, I was like, that's a lot of money, man. Why are you applying to so many schools? And he said, well, in reality, only half of them were serious schools, and the rest of them were free applications. And his mentality behind this was, when I get accepted, they're going to give me money because I have a good academic record, which they did. And the plan that he had was bouncing the schools off of each other saying, hey, so-and-so gave me X amount of money. I really want to go to your school. Is there any way you can give me a little bit more? And just kept going back and forth. And eventually, when he chose the school he wanted to go to, he ended up getting a little bit more money than they had originally given him, thus making it cheaper to go to school. In regards to the cost of college itself, it can be a doozy. Prices can vary drastically and are showing no signs of slowing down in price. It won't be too long before it costs $100,000 or more a year to go to college, which is ridiculous. So do everything in your power to get as much money as possible from scholarships and grants. Because yeah, you might plan to move off college at some point during your tenure there, but you have to imagine that in most situations, for your first or second year, you're going to be required to live on campus. So that means worrying about the cost of textbooks, food, room and board, tuition, and more. For more in-depth breakdown on the dark side of college, check out this video. Marriage is another amazing milestone in someone's life. And when you propose, you're most likely proposing with an engagement ring, which costs on average about $5,000. But now you're getting married but you want to know what the costs associated with marriage are. Now, the average wedding in America costs about $29,000. Now, you may be asking yourself, now, when the hell are you spending all that money on? Well, a large majority of it is spent on the venue and catering. Then there's the entertainment, rings, clothing, video and photos, flowers, potential groomsmen and bridesmaid gifts, the marriage license, bridal and bachelor parties, and so much more. Now, traditionally, it was the job of the bride's family to pay for the wedding and for the groom's family to pay for the rehearsal dinner, the alcohol, and sometimes the honeymoon. But times are changing, and now young couples more and more are paying for their own wedding, or at least half of it, by themselves. Now, as I mentioned earlier, raising kids can be very expensive. From zero to 18, it can cost roughly a quarter of a million dollars. Now, to rattle off some of the more expensive expenses you will have, childcare, which can cost a few hundred dollars a week if you do daycare, or about 700 if you get a nanny. Education. Public school is free, but private school can be between 10 and $20,000 a year on the low end. Clubs and sports. If your kids decide to pick up a sport, you have the cost of equipment, club fees, private lessons, and travel costs. Braces are surprisingly expensive. Traditional metal ones can cost between three and 7,000, 
and Invisalign and Ceramic cost about roughly the same. Healthcare. Besides the normal healthcare insurance costs, you have the cost of going to the doctor because kids get hurt and kids get sick. You'd honestly be shocked if they didn't because they're surrounded by other dirty kids and they're running around in nature and they have so little regard for their own safety. A pediatrician copayment can cost you about $30 and that's not even mentioning the potential costs of medicine or the hospital care should a serious injury happen. Food. Kids love to eat and they need to grow big and strong. Healthier food tends to be more expensive, so keep that in mind. Now clothing. According to KidPick, the average family spends about $1,300 a year on clothing per kid. Now this varies based on income and location and number of kids, but now you may be thinking that this number sounds relatively low. And I thought so too, because when I typically go into stores just to browse, you know, I'll see a t-shirt that's costing between 30 and $50. But when I went on Marshalls to research this video, it actually, shirts were costing between eight and $15, which is pretty reasonable. And vacations. Going on a vacation as a kid is one of the best feelings in the world. You get to go to Disney, maybe meet Mickey or Cinderella, and you get their signatures, or maybe your family goes to the beach where you get to swim with turtles. Now you don't know how much it costs and you're lost in the moment as you should. But trips to Disney can easily cost 10 grand and trips to Aruba just as much, if not more. It's gonna be very hard to give kids these types of memories when I'm older because it most likely Disney will start to cost 15, 20, even 30 grand. And is it worth all of that money? It's up to you. Now owning a home is a large part of the American dream, but I seriously doubt our ancestors had in mind that homes would cost $393,000. And that's just the average. Places like California, New York, and Hawaii easily can cost you $600,000 or more. Also, states like Florida, where people used to flock after they retired, are starting to explode in price as well. Mortgage rates are still higher than people would like them to be, and the Fed is taking its time with lowering interest rates due to inflation still not being under control. It's a tough time to buy homes. What's more, the NAR lawsuit should make home buying even more expensive for buyers, since now they will be responsible for paying their agent instead of the seller paying both agents. And once you buy a home, now you have the addition of maintenance costs, so this could be lawn care. This could be painting, replacing appliances, or even the big three, furnace, boiler, or roof. So becoming a homeowner is actually becoming significantly harder and more expensive to achieve. I've made many videos on homeownership, how to buy a home, how much money you need, what's the mortgage process like, what's the maintenance like, and you can find them in the description down below and also on my channel. Towards the end of our lives, life can become difficult, so it's common to get help in some form. If you were to move into a retirement home, you will most likely have to purchase your unit, which can cost as much as a home. Other facilities where you can't purchase your unit can cost roughly $10,000 a month. However, regardless of where you are, you will have access to other retirees, dining hall, entertainment, health facilities, and around the clock staff members and more, which can make it really worth it. If you were to need an in-home nurse, that might run you between $1,000 and $4,000 a month, depending on your level of need. And one step higher than that would be in-home or inpatient hospice care, which is around-the-clock service for your loved one. This can be very expensive, as there are nurses with you 24-7. It varies drastically by state and facility and level of care needed, but typically it's a few hundred dollars a day, but can also go into the thousands. End-of-life care can evaporate decades worth of savings in an instant and put you in a very difficult situation because you want your loved one not to be in pain, but you might not have the financial assets to make that happen. That's why I strongly recommend end of life policies because this can potentially save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in the end. And finally, the only other thing certain besides taxes, death. Surprisingly, even death is expensive. The average funeral can cost you about $8,000. And what's more, the actual plot, should you decide to be buried, can be between $500 and $5,000. Now, one thing that may not be traditional, but something that's very popular in my culture and family is an after funeral meal. So instead of leaving the funeral all sad and somber and letting these emotions carry with you throughout the day or week, you have a meal. You sit down with everybody who attended and you reminisce, you talk about the deceased person's life, you have fun, and you reconnect with old friends and family. Now, thankfully, I haven't been to many funerals in my life, but from the ones that I have gone to, I know these meals can tend to be a little bit expensive, but it's worth it. Now, obviously I missed a few milestones and they don't technically have to go in this order. But if there's any events that you want me to talk about, put them in the comments down below. And until then, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching.
If you like what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.